Today's application is one that you will use definitely, it'll affect just about every day of your life once you graduate high school. Most people, when they go to college, um, do not have enough money to pay up front all that they owe. Most money when they most people when they buy a car don't have money to pay to pay up front everything to buy that car with just cash. But same thing with a house. So um, whether it's a house, a car, uh, college tuition, lots of times in life you're going to have to borrow money. Um, and today's topic, interest, essentially you can see in the definition here, is basically a fee you pay to a financial institution, usually a bank or a mortgage company, that gives you the ability to use their money. Uh, when we bought our house, when we bought our car, we didn't have enough money to put it all down, put it all down uh, right up front. So we had to buy, when we, bought our, when we bought our house, we had to borrow money from Coldwell Banker. And now we're paying that back over a 30 year period. That's called a mortgage. Um, same thing with uh, when I went to college, when I uh, bought, bought my cars, all that stuff. Um, those are all examples of me using Coldwell Banker's money and them saying, okay, that's fine, but if you're going to use our money, you've got to pay us back some additional money. Um, so there's no such thing as free money. These things called credit cards right here, folks. Visa is kind enough to let you use their money up front, you don't have to pay cash when you're at the store, um, but Visa says, you know what, if you don't pay that money back at the end of the month, you're going to owe us interest. You're going to owe us a fee based on how much money you borrow from us. That's, that's what interest is. The other side of that coin, I'm sure a lot of you have savings accounts or your, your parents have savings accounts. What you're doing when you set up a savings account is you are loaning your money to the bank and the bank is saying, since we're using your money, <clears throat> then we will pay you interest. So when you get your, your bank statement at the end of each month, that interest um, is, is what you are making because the bank is using your money. What's the bank using your money for? Well, they're using it to loan out money to other people and then they're collecting interest off that and that's what banks do. That's how they make money. So. Interest, uh, we're going to look at, there, there are two types of interest. There's simple interest and compound interest. Um, in all honesty, the, the, most, the more real example of this is compound interest. Um, you're going to get more into that in, uh, in, I think it's algebra two, when you study the amortization method. Um, but for our purposes, we're going to look at, at just simple interest. Okay, It's just one type of a fee paid for the use of money. Um, it's based on a couple things. Obviously, uh, here's, the, here's the formula down here. Okay, I equals PRT, or IPRT. Um, based on a couple things. Obviously, if you borrow more money, oops, if you borrow more money, you're going to owe more money. Or if you invest more money, you're going to make more money from that financial institution. This is called the principal. I think that's actually the wrong spelling. I think it should be L-E at the end. The principal. Um, that's, one, that's one thing that affects how much interest, which is I, obviously. How much interest you make is how much you put in. You put in less, you make less. You borrow, you borrow more, you owe more. The other thing that affects it is R, the rate. Okay, the rate of interest. It's the percent of what you borrow. Notice there's that, that phrase again. I keep saying that yesterday with commission. It was percent of what you buy, uh, what you sell. Sales tax, percent of what you what you buy. Uh, withholding taxes, a percent of your income. Same thing. These are all percents of. But there's one other factor here with interest, and that is T, which is time. Time is the amount that you spend uh, using that money. For instance, with my house, I'm going to spend 30 years paying this thing back. Um, or maybe less if I throw a little bit more money at it. Um, you, if, I would, uh, if I would spend 15 years paying this back, I would owe less money. Now, my monthly payments would be higher, which uh, you know, weigh that whether you can afford the higher monthly payments. But in the long run, I would owe less interest to the bank 
because I'm using their money for less time. Um, I want to point out, and I want you to highlight this. When you do these problems, time must always be in terms of years. So let me show you how this works. Just kind of off to the side or, or up top, wherever you have room on the paper. Um, just a couple examples here. Let's say I borrow, I want to buy a house, so I borrow $200,000. My interest rate, I get a pretty good interest rate right now. They're between 3 and 4%, really good time to buy. So my interest rate is 3%, and I'm going to borrow that for 30 years. So to calculate simple interest, all we would do is we would take these values, how much I borrow, my rate, and my time, and I would plug them back into this I equals PRT equation. So I do 200,000 times 3%. Remember 3 is not 3%, 3% is not 3. It's 3 one hundredths. So I gotta write it as a decimal. Times 30 years. And now all I have to do, pull up my calculator, and the interest I'm gonna owe times, times $180,000. That's how much the bank takes if it's simple interest. In reality, I'm actually probably going to owe more than this because this is actually, uh, when you do a mortgage, it's actually compound interest, which we'll talk about a little bit tomorrow in class. Um, this can also be used to find other things within the I equals PRT equation. Let's say, let's say um, I know that I make uh, $450 in interest on a college savings account. Uh, so I put money into the bank, I get $450 back from them as the return of my investment. So my principal, the amount I put up front, was let's say uh, $5,000. And they are giving me a rate, or an interest rate, of uh, let's say 1.5%. That's really good. 1.5% is really high. So all I got to do here, and by the way, this is what your quick check looks like. I give you these, these three values, and you find the missing value in the I equals PRT. All you got to do is plug in. I is 450. So instead of writing I, I write 450. P is 5,000. So instead of writing P, I write 5,000. R is 0 0.015. And what I need to know here, the missing value is T, the time. How long did it take me to make $450 if I had an interest rate of 1.5% and a principal of $5,000? Well, 5 times 0.015. This is going to take a little bit of algebra. So I multiply these two together, okay? And I get $75 times T equals 450. And now all I have to do is divide both sides by 75. Okay, so I multiply these two together. Here I didn't have to divide anything because they were all on the same side. Here I've got to do a little bit of the opposite just to get T by itself. So 450 divided by 75 is six years. So it took me six years to save that much money. Um, one more like this. Let's say I had, uh, I'm making, I, I owe, let's say this time we're borrowing money. So let's say I have a, a credit card and I want to buy a TV, flat screen TV. So my principal there, the amount I borrowed to begin with is two grand. Okay? Time it's going to take me to pay that. Let's say it takes me two years. And uh, let's say the interest I owe on that what the credit card company says I owe is $500. I don't know if this is going to give me reasonable numbers or, or not. We'll just see. So I'm looking for R. Notice I equals PRT. That's the thing I'm missing. It's R. So I'm going to plug in I is 500. P is 2,000. I don't know R, but I do know T is two years. Okay. So now I multiply these two together, 
bring down the 500. This is 4,000 times R. And I'm going to divide both sides by 4,000. So, divided by 4,000. 12 and a half. Well, look, this is 0.125. Remember, 0.125 is not a percent, though. So when you do R, you have to do one more step times 100. So R is 12 and a half percent, which is extremely low for a credit card. Credit cards usually run you about 20 to 22 percent interest. Um, anything higher than that, anything higher than 25 percent, uh, it's probably an illegal loan. Um, probably. I'm no financial guru, so who knows. But generally, credit cards are about 20 to 25 percent. You wonder how people get in debt so quickly. They don't pay their credit card bills, and this builds up. We'll talk about that tomorrow when we talk about compound interest. One more example. So that's how you use the, the I equals PRT equation. Now, where this gets a little difficult is where it shows up in a word problem. And what we have to do, and we're going to spend all of our time tomorrow dealing with problems like this. I'm only going to do one, and then we'll save the other three on the note sheet for class. Um, what we have to do is we have to pull out those keywords that tell us uh, P, I, R, and T, okay? Um, now, in this problem, we have somebody buying a car. Notice the first word that should jump out at you, I want you to highlight this or box this, is the word borrowed. Remember, borrowed is the initial amount. That's the starting amount. So what I'm going to do, I want everybody to do this. Make a list. Make a list of all the numbers that they give you in the problem and which letter in the I equals PRT equation does it stand for? So if it says borrowed, this 15,000 is going to be the principal. Obviously, for the next one, 3, that's got to be T, time. 3 years. Now, annual simple interest rate. They might not give you that word rate, but if you see like simple interest, if it's got a percent sign on it, you know it's R. Anything with a percent sign on it, that's R. So 9% is R. Now, we need to figure out what are we solving for. So for this, let me switch up colors from my highlighter. We're looking for how much interest will she pay? And then, what is the total amount? We'll get to that in a second. How much interest, first of all? Well, that can very easily be found by doing I equals P or T. I is what we're looking for because that's how much interest. P is 15,000 times R, which is 0 0.09. Remember, this has to be changed to a decimal, times three years. I'm just taking everything from my list. So the interest that Jessica is going to owe is 15,000 times 0 0.09 times three. She's going to owe $4,050 in interest. Now, at the end of that time, let's say Jessica says to the bank, here you go, here's your $4,050 I owe you because I used your money. Bank's going to say, uh-uh, we didn't, we didn't loan you $4,050. Yeah, you owe us that $4,050 because we let you use our money. However, give us our money back. You don't get to keep the $15,000. Yeah, Jessica had to take that $15,000 and give it to the car, the car dealer, but she still has to pay all that money back. So you need to pay back the total amount you owe. There's another formula for you to know. A equals principal plus interest. The total amount you owe is going to be the principal plus the interest. So there were really two equations here. So I equals PRT, and then the total amount equals principal plus interest. So once we, we have that in mind, we know Jessica is going to pay back not only this $4,050, she's also going to pay back the $15,000 that she owed to begin with. Only then will the bank send her the deed to the car. Yeah, that's right. You don't get to keep the deed to the car. The bank keeps that for you because technically they are the owners of the car until your loan is paid off.